if you find a job today, there are many things that you might hear from all the gurus out there. They tell you what to do, how to ace your interview, how to write the perfect cover letter. But what they don't tell you is what you shouldn't do. So these are five mistakes today that I want to share about what you're doing wrong in your job hunt. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there is a right or wrong way, but there are ways that do not necessarily work in this particular moment as you look for a job. This is why you don't feel like you're moving. Let's look at Jim Collins and he's the famous author of Good to Great, the book that studied how mediocre companies move to greatness. And in his book, he talks about how you should have a stop doing list. And today, I want to look at the things that you should stop doing as you look for your job. Because today, you are not just competing with other millennials. You're competing with people who have lost their jobs as mid-career professionals. It might be the oil and gas employee that has been retrenched because of the downturn in oil and gas. It might be the facility manager that doesn't have a place to manage since everyone is working from home. It might even be the restaurant manager that has been sacked because there are no dine-in experiences today. And then this you. You're fresh-faced and you wonder, how am I going to win in this competitive job market here? Well, here are the five things you're doing that are not helping. This is the first. You are settling for what comes. If today you are looking at a job offer that comes, you might be tempted to say, well, I'm going to take this because... I didn't have anything else to take. Well, that's not the right approach simply because settling for what comes is not understanding the skills that you have. In Richard Boles's book, What Color Is Your Parachute? He talks about how you should find work that fits your skills and your interests. And in it, he talks about how you can write seven stories of the achievements that you've had in life. Don't sell yourself short by settling for a work that uses little of your skills and develops little of the skills that you want to grow. Instead, use the skills that you have that you already enjoy using. Secondly, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. When you're applying for a job, it's tempting to just apply for one simply because it's stressful enough to write one cover letter, to sit through one interview, and to wait for another reply. But when you do that, you are not giving yourself a fighting chance. I'm not saying that you should end up in a scatter fire mood where you are shooting at everything, but you can do better by diversifying your bets. How do you do that? Well, for the first thing you can do is to play a better game. Today, you might be tempted to apply for one job because you think application is going to go through and it can be stressful but one afternoon as I was torturing myself over yet another rejected application I realized that this was a game and that I was going to miss 100% of the shots that I didn't take and if I was going to give myself a fighting chance I needed to <laughs> help myself by applying more Granted, it was very stressful. I'm not saying that I fully understand where your pain is, but for me, it was really painful to send out cover letters, to send out postcards like this, uh, which I had handcrafted with another local calligrapher and not get any feedback. 
people were not sending back any replies. They were just taking in these postcards. And I was just thinking to myself, well, how mean can they be? Well, you have the choice. You can choose to continue suffering or you can choose to say, I am going to make myself a better gamer. See, this time as a time to sell yourself better. Because in any field in life, to sell is human, as Dan Pink says in his great book. You choose to thrive and not just to survive. You choose what you want to approach this journey as. So think of yourself as selling yourself better. One book I greatly recommend is Michael Port's great book, Steal the Show, which he talks about how you can grow as a speaker and more importantly, in showing up as a performer on life's biggest stages, your interviews, your marriage vows, and even perhaps in your conversation with another person. The third thing that you do that might not work is just wing it. You can't go into an interview just winging it because Looking at it as something that you can just wing and go in without any preparation is not giving the interviewer any respect, but more importantly, you're not giving yourself any respect. As you go into an interview, look at it as a chance to perform. And as you transit between the performance zone and the learning zone, take the chance to review each and every interview that you give. For example, after every interview, I find it helpful to write down the impressions that I've had from each interview and to take the chance to improve the next interview. This is helpful in helping you to build a better skill of selling yourself, communicating your self-worth and communicating your worth. Next, in an interview, you might be tempted to think of it as just another chat. But more often, it's a journey where you take the interviewer from where he is right now, doubting whether you have the capabilities to taking the interviewer to where he says, I've got to give you a job. I've got to give you a job. So today's interviews conducted online, you might not know what the interviewer is saying. In a recent phone interview I had, there was no way I could see the interviewer's reactions. And when I first picked up the call with the interviewer, she went straight into it and I was caught short. I said to her, well, I didn't expect this to start so quickly. There was awkward silence. After that, I felt <laughs> the interview. I'm not sure it was because of that, but as I look back, I realized it was because of my discomfort with a lack of reaction. Today, as you do Zoom interviews or video conferencing interviews, the other interviewer might be trained not to give you a response. This is because they do not want to give you the wrong impression, nor do they want to validate your responses for fear of giving you the wrong impression that you are going to get hired and eventually you don't. So if today you are not getting any validation, then validate yourself. Breathe, just take a deep breath. If you're not seeing any response from the interviewer, trust yourself. Trust that you've got this. And even if you don't get the eventual job, trust yourself that you are going to move on from this and even better person. Keep practicing. Practice with your dog even if your dog falls asleep. I cannot stress this enough because very often we take interviews as a game. We think, we might think that, okay, an interview is just an interview. But it's not. It's a chance for you to perform. It's a chance for you to step up your game. And it's a chance 
for you to give your best shot. Waiting for an answer. Don't wait for an answer. Take the initiative and write a thank you card. Many interviewees do not do this, and that's why they get forgotten. After each interview, take the chance to just write a thank you card, thanking the interviewer for his time and reminding the interviewer of your greatest qualities. This reminds the interviewer of the worth and the value that you will bring to him. It reminds him that you actually existed because when there's so much work and interviewers work with you, it's just a small part of the rest of his day. But when you remind him with such words of appreciation, he thinks, well, this is a pretty nice guy. Maybe I should hire him. And lastly, we might make the mistake of moving from and not to. Very often when we move from a place with a negative culture, we might think that we are choosing joy. But if you take three months to adapt to a new place, to learn the ropes, another three months to understand what you're doing and to do the thing well, you have wasted six months if you realize that this place doesn't fit. Whenever you move to a new place, take the chance to understand what's actually there. Understand what the culture is like. What is the work that's actually being done? What does your supervisor expect of you? That helps. Very often, it's easy to have the push factors that push you to a new job and not to think of the pull factors that bring you to a new job. So think about the pull factors. What are the skills that you're going to build in this new job? What's the culture like that's bringing you there? Are there great mentors that you can learn from from this new place? And as I close, this job hunt process is fraught with uncertainty. And very often, you might be tempted to just give up and to just say, well, I don't want to do this any longer. This is too much effort. But at the end of the day, think not about the job you eventually do or the job title you eventually take or who you eventually work with. It's not about being or doing. Rather, it's about who you become. So take this chance to become greater. What was the most insightful point for you as you listened to this? And what is the mistake that you often make in your own job hunt process? Share them in the comments below and I'd love to hear from you.